Whenever you're ready. Hello, my name is Kristen Phillips, and I would like to inform you about the communication barriers between the deaf communities and hearing communities and how it affects the children's education. So how has modern technology helped to improve the education of deaf people? Throughout the entire world, there are students ranging from the ages of 5 to 18 that have the disability of being deaf or hard of hearing. They do not always have the same educational opportunities as the hearing community. To acquire these opportunities and equal learning experiences, many technological advances have been made for the deaf children. Technological advances for deaf and hard of hearing children are expensive. Most families cannot afford them for their children, so non-technological strides are also being taken. There are many actions being taken to ensure all students have the same learning experiences and opportunities ranging from expensive technological advances to education systems implementing new methods in the classrooms. The communication barriers between the deaf and hard of hearing people have been not school for many years. There have been many steps being taken to bridge this gap. The 67th International Federation of Liberty Associations and Institutions Council and General Conference in the August of 2001 stated that one of the first schools in the world started exclusively for the deaf community, and it was established in Paris, France in the 1700s. Then another followed closely after in 1784 in Rome. People from those schools used the methods and schools there to come to America and using the knowledge they gained, opened the first public school for the deaf which led to the openings of other schools for the blind and hearing students in the 1830s. The World Federation of the Deaf, a non-governmental national organization that focuses on human rights of deaf people, has encouraged a celebration of the history of deaf. One of their main goals is to get more deaf people involved in their local community libraries because it is a good place for deaf people of all ages to connect with others in their communities due to a shared hobby. Even though the deaf population is encouraged to make an effort to communicate with the hearing population and vice versa, a residential school in Omaha, Nebraska advised students and their families not to learn sign language, which is a good form of communication with the hearing population. The reason emerged in 1981 from the book Deaf Heritage by Jack R. Gannon. The book was first ever written about deaf history in America. It stated that sign language was outlawed in education because it believed that children should learn more through reading lips and speech by the delegates at the Second International Congress on the Education of Deaf in 1880. This led to sign language become, becoming a dying form of education. From vanishing voices, it talked about Aka and the Tuvan and their isolated tribes and seeing the loss of their languages. The Tuvan has roughly 328 million first language speakers. Like the Tuvan, the Aka is facing the depletion of their native language due to changes in their society. Like the Aka, the Tuvan tribes and the Tuvan tribes, the deaf communities are also losing their main way of communication, which is sign language. New doors are being opened for the children that are deaf or have other disabilities. They can now get a better education along with regular children due to the passage of education of all handicapped children, which is the Act of 1975. It gave all children equal right to public education. Inclusion is a widely used method in education systems because it allows for students ranging from 5 to 18 to work with others who may not be exactly like them. In inclusion situations, the students are given the opportunity to collaborate and work together in a classroom setting. They get to learn about other students' ideas and see how they may go through life in different ways. Inclusion is like the self-portrait between the borderline of Mexico and the United States in 1932 by Frida Kaplan. Inclusion allows students to share opinions and points of views on topics in the classroom. Hearing students and deaf students get the chance to work together and compare the ways they do things. In the self-portrait, it allows two sides of how the world is viewed to be seen. On one side, it shows the old ruins with flowers, a temple, and signs of religious symbols in the skies. On the other side of the portrait is industrialized America. It shows the population of being put out from factories, pollution from being put out from factories in the atmosphere. It also shows that nature is being overtaken by buildings and cities. The woman in the middle of the portrait is experiencing both sides like her. The students get to experience new things and adapt to the people around them by putting together through inclusion. This shows that sign communication is going down since the technology of cochlear implants is going up 
and their or oral communication, which they are adapting to the hearing population, is rising. Other ways to help improve deaf and hard of hearing children in school is through modern technology to enhance their hearing and sounds around them. Alexander Graham Bell attempted to invent new technologies to assist the deaf, but after failing, he created a telephone, which eventually became used by everyone, including the deaf and hard of hearing. Deaf assisting technology have emerged from that since then. Some examples are genomet genometics, cochlear implant, sign language corpora, and educational tracking systems and mobile communications. Genomics is genetic mapping of ears to find the best solutions to make improvements on hearing by finding what type of hearing impairment a person has. It shows that the cochlear implantation would be successful if another method would work best. Cochlear implants are small electronic devices that are partially inside of the ear and outside of it. It consists of a microphone speech processor, a transmitter that makes the picked up sounds turn into electric impulses that send to the auditory nerve. Approximately 220,000 people worldwide have a cochlear implant, and it allows the user about 70% hearing. And this is how it works. So it would go in through the processor and transmitter, and then through the cochlear nerve. Teachers use auditory and visual methods to help their students in the classrooms. Educational tracking systems are done in classrooms by teachers or in homes by parents or guardians. The process is done over long periods of time to track the children's progress in the core curriculum such as math, science, language arts, and social studies. Parents are also getting involved by advocating for their children at parent-teacher meetings by using an app by the American Society of Deaf Children, the National Association of Deaf, and the Hands of Voices. These organizations all aim to better education for deaf and disabled children to provide them with unbiased support in their communities. This allows parents to learn what to say to help experts through watching videos and collaborate with other parents on how to inform teachers about their students' social needs. So some solutions and limitations are deaf students get hearing aids or cochlear implants that can connect to teachers frequency modulation microphones. The only problem is that expensive, that they are expensive and cannot always be put into public schools because they may not have enough students to support it as well. Another solution is that the it would enhance deaf children's education by making modified classrooms in addition to more public classrooms. This would allow putting in more speakers throughout and getting more technology put in to help them learn the basic things and put inclusion into classrooms. The problem is, yet again, money and that some technology just hasn't been created enough to collaborate with the schools. Okay. Let's see here. What evidence did you gather that you didn't use, and why did you choose not to use it? So, as I was doing my research, I got, I found an article about a mother and talking about her son's life in school, and how some teachers just did not understand how to teach him, and they just wouldn't change to help him. So, as he went through life, he was at a disadvantage. I chose to not include that, though, because I got because towards the end it started talking about how we could do more educational things in schools to help these students but it just in the end it just didn't work out and I found more things that would in my, to put into my solutions. Okay. Uh, what might be real-world implications or consequences of your findings and then what are the implications for your community? So some real-world findings could be that the technology is implemented into all public schools and to help the deaf, but throughout the community it could also be done just at a smaller scale, which would help in smaller numbers. Okay, thanks. <laughs>